Hey Bremerton, how about a fresh baked pizza pie? I'm going to tell you where the newest pizzeria in all of downtown Bremerton is set to debut on this week's edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. Stick with us. Some say there's this master plan that's always taking place. Some... Welcome back to this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast, sponsored by the Admiral Theatre. Story number one today, welcome to the new digs of Fairgrounds Pizza, which is opening its second location right here on 1st Street. We spent several months redoing Fairgrounds and opened that up in August 2012 and just kind of been looking since then for a new spot to open. And I've always loved downtown Bremerton since we originally moved here, so this seemed like the perfect location for me. People from the East Coast really like it. They said it's close to home. It's as close to home as what they can find. We make our dough fresh every day and um, it's a hand-tossed dough and then our sauce is a special recipe. I just always had the idea of having a place where I could put a little jukebox in, like your hometown pizza place that you come and you travel to. And eventually I'd like to, you know, maybe put in a pinball machine, just something, you know, that makes it a little homey. Story number two today. For nearly a decade, the Washington Youth Academy has been molding some of our state's most at-risk youth into the leaders of tomorrow. The campus, nestled in the West Hills of Bremerton, has now graduated 2,300 young people from its National Guard-run boot camp and school. I spent some time there this last week to see how it works. I came from a kid just playing around in the streets, uh, getting in trouble, making the wrong friends. After the academy, I feel like I'm a, a way different person than I was. It built me up from like a person that never really did anything to actually doing something to build my confidence up. It's, it's a quasi-military style environment, so it's, it's basically like, you know, if, if someone gets in trouble, then we all kind of go down for, for that one person. It's kind of like that in real life, you know, if, if a person at your job gets in trouble, you kind of, you're kind of affected by what mistake they made. How we say it is one team, one fight. Story number three today, the Ferry Hayek is a familiar face on board the Seattle to Bremerton Ferry Run. But the Hayek, now a half century old, is nearing retirement. Kitsap Sun reporter Nathan Pilling spent some time with the engineer on board the Hayek to find out what makes this vessel so special. These are the super class vessels. This boat was the first one to arrive and it showed up uh, 4th of July of 1967. It's old school, it's simple. Uh, reliable, uh, the systems are easy to troubleshoot and consequently they're fairly straightforward to repair. If you can turn a wrench and have a grasp of the theory, you can probably tackle it. The, the boat's got a lot of life left in it and you know I think they're gonna have to figure out a way to keep it. <laughs> oh and by the way the ferry Hayek may yet get more use on the Seattle Bremerton run as well as other runs on the Washington State Ferry Systems map because the state legislature is thinking that it will need to keep a backup boat around so that others in the system can be properly maintained. Story number four today a West Bremerton family went through a terrifying ordeal this last January. Their dog Cheyenne got loose in the streets of Bremerton. Though the family was new to the area, they were able to harness the power of social media and more than anything, uniting the community in an effort that helped bring their dog Cheyenne home. She got out of her collar. Apparently it just wasn't tight enough and we didn't know um, and took off. That kind of started um, yeah, the long five and a half days of trying to get her back home. We were out at least 12 hours a day looking for her from sunup to sundown. We hired a dog tracker who was great and he did get us from sort of point A to point B, but then her scent disappeared. Um, so we got a phone call the next day from a contractor who went to check on his house and she was under the porch. We were, me and my son and daughter, we were all bawling, <laughs> just crying. The community came out in full force. I mean, people texted me that I didn't know called me, saw us either on Nextdoor app or Facebook or saw the flyers up and people went walking, looking for her, letting me know, hey, where'd you last see her? I'll go out and look. And it just really made me proud of where we live and made me want to get to know all of these wonderful people who would spend their own time to go look for our dog that they've never even met before. 
And finally, story number five. I am thrilled to announce the Kitsap Sun's latest story walk. The return of the Roxy will not only bring alive all of 4th Street on Friday, March 2nd, but our Story Walk participants will be able to see the first movie within the recently remodeled 1941 built theater. It will be a historic night and will be completely free to attend. You just have to RSVP at kitsapsun.com. That's our show for this week. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope you were able to catch some of the orcas in the pod that headed up the Port Washington Narrows this Tuesday. It's always a special sight to see the whales there, but remember to keep your distance as we want to make them feel welcome here. See you next week. Music for this week's Bremerton Beat Blast was the work of Bremerton legend and musician Jeff Tassin, whose songwriter showcase is every Tuesday night at Brother Don's on Kids Halfway. Well, you find out whose payroll they're on, then ask them folks about that intelligent design. Oh, someday your theory and reality, they might.